Hi guys, can a 2003 game be still worth on 2020? Check my intro and then we get into it. A long, long time ago, guys, when I was still younger, before Call of Duty and Medal of Honor had been released, Wolfie was the very first choice on PC Warfare game. Return to Castle Wolfenstein, the game enemy territory it is based on, was fantastic, guys. You had to go with William B.J. Blaskowitz, our hero. You had to stare your way through World War II Nazi zombies, night zombies, and occasionally all sorts of abomination on the laws of man, science, nature, and gods. When first came out, Return to Castle Wolfenstein had a multiplayer mode that people enjoyed and for which a lot of people made custom maps. Splash Damage was a studio that created a viral map for RTCW, based on Operation Market Garden during Second World War. Activision was very impressed with this map. They started work together and made an expansion for Return to Castle Wolfenstein that would have a multiplayer campaign and be released around two years after the first launch. Unfortunately for Return to Castle Wolfenstein itself, things didn't work out that well, so instead of expanding Wolfie, it became its own game. Then the single player aspect got axed from the game and instead of being released as a commercial product, the unthinkable happened. Guys, we got this amazing multiplayer FPS for free. It's basically an open source, so you can modify it completely. In fact, there is a implementation of it called ET Legacy that aims to improve upon it by making it work a bit better on modern systems. It's compatible with existing servers and existing clients. I think you can basically play matches on the same server with the two different client versions. It's just amazing, guys. ET was huge in its own way. It was one of the most popular multiplayer FPS game on a PC for many years, probably seven or ten. It's just a long time for a first FPS. I was still playing this game in 2010. At the time, I had a character called Bientien, and I'm sure many will remember that name if seen again on servers. Now, I'm still playing it, not as much as before for obvious reason. However, I'm happy to see that the community is still more than active, and that you can find real human playing in any of the thousands of custom servers available. If for any chance you see any message like, you were killed by Eta Panzerfaust, or you killed Eta, that means, guys, we are playing together in the same server right now. <laughs> so, let's talk about the game. In this game, there are two teams. You can be an Axis or you can be an Ally. They fight on the battlefields of World War II in Europe and in Northern Africa. They fight for a victory, a single victory on every map. It's not team deathmatch, not even capture the flag. It is. Unreal Torment Assault Mode, where we have actual objectives to be accomplished during the match. As an Axis, you generally defend. As an Ally, you often attack in massive maps. Shooting everything that moves around, guys, on sideways, underground tunnels, on passages. You can actually also capture bunkers or build stuff through castle and fortifications. As you can imagine, there is a lot of stuff to do. Again, it isn't just about shooting other people. In some way, it's a little bit capture the flag as well. You do have to go around and capture forward bunkers to get new spawn points or objectives that you have to return home. The enemy can actually take back the bunkers to gain back their spawn points if they want to, obviously. You also have to escort around vehicles vital for your victory to complete objectives. You can blow up gates, barriers, whereas the defender can rebuild them up. You have machine guns randomly placed to build and used to protect or hold critical sites. 
Sometimes you have objectives such as goal to be set on a truck that you have to escort to gain victory. You can fire mortars at enemy to keep them away from where you are, bombarding an area to make sure no one gets through. Sometimes, although someone eventually gets through and shoots you in the face, <laughs> maybe someone disguised as your ally, so it is hard for you to distinguish it. In the game, there are five classes. The soldier. Soldier is the raw grunt. The guy who carry bigger guns like mortars, mobile MG42, a flamethrower, and yes, the Panzerfaust. The Panzerfaust has always been one of the most challenging weapons to use. It complies with gravity, therefore the rocket has a descending trajectory, hard to use. Also has a strong AOE effect, and you end up killing yourself many times in the hunting. And this is the reason why the name Panzer Noob was created. You play with the Panzer Faust, you kill, yes, but you die all the time. So you are a noob, you are a Panzer. Noob. There is also the medic. The medic job is to keep you alive or revive you when you are crying out murder and lying on the ground. Unfortunately, guys, there are also bad medics, most of them. They will run to you to revive you but they will just avoid saving your short future once near you. Bad, bad doctor. After the medics, there are the field ops. Field ops can give other people ammunition, which is useful because you don't have a lot of them. There are also areas where you have free ammo and medikits. You can even get them from enemies' corpses. Field Ops can also call in artillery strikes that are really strong solution to hold a specific spot. And well, air strikes, that's for clear the path for your allies. That's when you hear in the game, clear the path. There is also what I call the critical character, the engineer. He can build stuff on predefined areas, things that makes him extremely helpful. He can repair vehicles, create a command center, Place dynamite to blow up gates or barriers and place deadly landmine. The engineer is the only character that can actually make you win most of the maps. And finally the cover ops. We have the spy. This is possibly one of the most fun characters to play and very hard to keep alive. You can choose to be a sniper in this class. Unfortunately, sniper in enemy territory is fun, but not, not as much as in other games. And I love being a sniper, trust me guys. Problem is because most of the time one headshot does not kill the enemy, this makes it very frustrating and very, very little realistic. Being a spy, you can disguise yourself as an enemy by stealing the clothes from a dead foe. Lastly, you have smoke bombs and also explosive packs that let you destroy common sense. Playing any class will grant experience on its unique abilities. This will gift you different weapons, faster recharge, or other bonus things like different ranks and more hit points. Back then there were similar games, but you can still absolutely play enemy territory today. It is free and the legacy version is also free, so you should really download it and play. So now. Why Splash Damage did not make a sequel? Why not making a sequel of something so good and that everybody enjoyed playing? Well, they did something like a sequel. I mean, how do you possibly make a sequel for a multiplayer? Yes. So what they did is creating enemy territory Quake Wars, which is basically the same lore of enemy territory Wolfie, but based on the Quake version. What they did was creating enemy territory Quake Wars, basically the same idea but on Quake Universe. To be honest with you, I played it and well, I now play Wolfie's AT, not Quake AT. Even Unreal Tournament 2004 did not go too far. One of the reasons was that the mega texture technology made maps making complicated and I don't think it got the same kind of love that enemy territory Wolfie got. Plus, 
this was a game that you actually had to pay, guys. It wasn't any free source, it wasn't free. You had to pay for quick and military. And that's about everything that there is to say on Wolfenstein enemy territory. It is still an amazing game, guys. It is still played by thousands, if not tens of thousands of people. And it's so active that you would just enjoy and have so much fun playing. So my final thoughts on Return to Castle Wolfenstein enemy territory are excellent. Extremely positive. In my personal opinion, this is a game that is still worth playing. It's so much fun, guys. It has features that even newer and much better looking games don't offer. That's mainly because the community behind it is incredibly active and friendly. So check the link below on the description to download your free copy of Wolfie ET today. And guys, let's start play together. We're gonna have so much fun. So what are you waiting for guys? The link is down there. Check it, download it, install it and let's play together. And this brings us to the end of the episode guys. I hope you enjoyed my content, I hope you had some good idea and some good fresh news on the enemy territory. If you like my content, if you like what I do, please subscribe. If you want to have more reviews, if you want to check more reviews on old games, on new games, on upcoming games, hit the subscribe button, smash the bell. You will always be prompt when I put on new creations. And that will be twice a week at least. I thank you very much for joining me. As always, it's really, really good to have a good community like we have. Guys, have a great week. I see you around. This is Beta Gaming. I'm Matteo. Have fun, guys. Let's go and play. See ya, guys. <laughs>